Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about what it costs to convert the G0602 to CNC. Now, this is probably not going to be an exact price. Uh, you're probably going to spend a little bit more than this. There are some options. Uh, there are some places where you could save money, but uh, I wanted to give you kind of an overview of what I spent, and all of these prices are accurate as of August 2015. So let's jump right in. The first thing is the cost of the machine itself, which is $1,350 to your door. For the electronics, we're going to be going over all of this in a very detailed video. So if you have questions, go ahead and post them now, and uh, and I'll write them down for when I get to making this video. But uh, we'll be going over all this stuff in, in detail. So the first thing is the X-axis NEMA 23 570-ounce motor. Uh, if you're going to go with the belt the two to one uh, belt reduction that I use, you're gonna need to go with the quarter inch shaft version of this motor. Now I believe there's dual shaft, single shaft, quarter inch, uh, and three eighths options. There's also a four wire and an eight wire. The four and eight don't matter. The single and dual don't matter. But if you're gonna go with a belt drive, I highly recommend you go with a quarter inch shaft. The driver for this stepper is the 5056D. I would also say if there's a larger NEMA 23, like a 600 or a 700 ounce, go ahead and get it. The bigger, the better. Uh, it's not going to really hurt you in any way. And, and all of this, uh, all of the big components came from AutomationTechnologiesInc.com. 570 was the biggest NEMA 23 they had when I bought mine. They may have something larger now. Okay, let's skip down to the NEMA 34, 906 ounce. This is the Z uh, axis stepper. And I believe they now have a larger one, a 1200 ounce. If you want to get that, fine. Um, this only comes in eight wire, I believe, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, half inch, single shaft, dual shaft would be okay. Um, link to the exact one that I bought, it's going to work. Now, the reason why you want a big, powerful Z is because when you're doing drilling, uh, when you're drilling, you're going to use, you're going to need a lot of torque, and these big stepper motors provide a lot of torque. If this ends up not being enough, then what I'm going to do is a two to one belt reduction on the Z axis as well. And of course I'll lose speed, but I would rather give up some speed and not miss steps um, due to a lack of torque. Uh, the driver for this axis is the uh, KL8070D. The breakout board is a C11. And uh, if you didn't know it, I'm actually controlling both my mill and my lathe from the same enclosure. This means I can only use one at a time, which I'm fine with. Uh, and so the C11 breakout board is the one that I went with when I did my mill conversion. And I still recommend it. It's a great board. It's opto-isolated. It's got onboard relays, uh, a lot of features, really, really solid board. Uh, you're going to need a power supply to run all of this. Uh, well, the 48 volt, 12 volt, uh, the nope, 12 and a half amp switching power supply controls the drivers themselves. Um, it's not on this list here, but you're also going to need a 5 volt, 12 volt power supply. You could use like an ATX power supply out of an old computer. Um, something from a mini ATX would be even better. Uh, I guess I should have included this in the price, but I didn't have to buy one. And uh, you'll see why in the electronics video, but you are going to need a second power supply. In my original uh, 12 volt, 5 volt power supply was out of a Dell server case and it was huge and awful, but it totally worked. Um, okay, so there is a, a C3 pulse index card and this is to give you spindle feedback so you can synchronize the spindle with the Z axis for threading. Now Mach 3 only requires one pulse per revolution and apparently they get pretty good results with it. Linux CNC will work with one pulse per revolution but it will not be happy. Um, Linux CNC actually wants a quadrature signal and I'm not going to get into that anymore because that that topic may end up being its own video. The next item is the speed measure sensor module. Uh, these are not available on Amazon at this time, but that's where I got mine. And this also has to do with the spindle encoder, which again, we'll talk about later. Um, I'm using terminal blocks for my power in. I have 110 volt and 220 volt coming into my box, and those both go into terminal blocks. Uh, I got a five pack in this uh, at this link for like five bucks. So even though I only use two, they're cheap. It doesn't matter. The EMI filter is for the VFD. Um, some people say that VFDs create a lot of noise on the input, so you want to go to a line filter ahead of the VFD, so I went ahead and got one. Limit switches, um, those are obvious. 
different gauges of wire. Um, I use 18.4 shielded for the stepper motors. Um, 16.4 would be great for the three-phase motor. You could get away with 18 gauge here, but 16 gauge will give you a little bit of extra headroom. Uh, I actually went with 12.4, which is super overkill because this motor only pulls like three and a half amps. And then 24 gauge, that's what I'm using for all of my uh, sensors. Um, a good source for uh, cheap small wire is actually a USB cable. I believe it is four conductor shielded. Maybe it's three plus ground. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, I actually use that for my pulse signals. But for the limit switches, I just have some 24 gauge uh, four strand shielded. Aviation connectors are for plugging all of the wires into the enclosure. These aren't necessary. You could just run everything through grommets um, and then straight into the components themselves. I like the idea of being able to unhook my stuff from outside the enclosure. Uh, so I went with various aviation connectors. You're going to need a parallel cable to talk to the uh, that goes between the controller computer and the breakout board and then the controller computer itself you'll need a monitor keyboard and mouse now the one i've been using this whole time for my mill is an old dell pc that a friend of mine bought back in i think 2004 you don't need a lot of computing power to run linux cnc uh let's see next is the enclosure i got this shipped on ebay for 75 bucks and i felt like that was a scream in price uh, Hoffman 20 by 20 by eight. That's plenty big for a, uh, single machine enclosure. It's a little tight, um, housing both the G0704 and the G0602 stuff, but it, it actually does work. And then, uh, let's scroll down here. We've got the, uh, Leeson three phase motor and the Tico VFD. This is not the VFD I'm using, but it's the one everybody suggests you use. The Leeson is a direct bolt on fantastic. Um, I was originally not going to do the three phase conversion and this, like the very first time I ran code, I realized, yep, I need a VFD. So I would just suggest planning on doing it. And then you're going to need various standoffs and screws for mounting stuff inside the enclosure. I actually got a bunch of that from a buddy of mine, so I didn't have to buy any. So we're looking at about uh, 1300 bucks in this category. Hardware. This is really more about linear motion. Um, you're going to need the Z-axis ball screw, which is a 20 millimeter, 5 millimeter per revolution. And then the X-axis is a 12 millimeter, 4 millimeter per revolution. And I debated on giving you the exact dimensions of my screws, and I have decided not to do it. Um, if you buy them from Linear Motion Bearing uh, 2008, his eBay store, um, and there's a link here, you can just pick up the screw with the couplers and the bearing blocks. And the reason why I went this route is because I didn't want to make my own bearing blocks and I didn't want to order coupler components from like McMaster, which is what I did for my mill. I thought it'll just be easier to get everything as a bundle. And that's what I did. Now, uh, the 1250 millimeter Z axis ended up being about six inches too long. Um, the 430 happens to be the shortest one he lists on his eBay store at the time of this video, but the final size of my X-axis screw was only 240 millimeter. Now, if you want to design your own screws, you can shoot him an email and say, uh, you know, this, give him a drawing and he'll make them to your spec. In fact, my 1204 X-axis screw was made to my spec. Um, but again, I, I don't really want to give you my exact dimensions because I'm afraid it won't work for your application. So I would just say buy them a little bit too long, like this 1250 and this 430, and then cut them down to length with a uh, just a cutoff wheel and an angle grinder. And then you can use the lathe to actually turn the floating, let's see, so you have the driven end that's threaded and you have the non-driven end which just has a floating bearing. That's the end you'll cut off and then just remachine the bearing uh, surface and you're good to go. A little bit extra work, but it's not a big deal. Uh, various pieces of aluminum for brackets. It's probably not really 100 bucks, but that's what I put down. Uh, the tool post riser block. This is if you're going to get rid of the compost. <laughs> compost. The compound rest. Uh, you're not going to need the compound once you're CNC'd. And on this lathe, it's a notoriously flimsy component anyway, so why not just eliminate it? Um, I felt 30 bucks was way too much to spend for a chunk of steel, but that's what it was. I think it was a piece of 1018. Um, you may be able to find something cheaper on eBay, and I highly recommend that's where you go to look. Uh, these dimensions are rough, and I think 
I don't believe those are the final size. Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, that actually might be the final size. Um, so anything bigger, you'll have to machine down to the size. And of course, we'll cover that in a video. Then we've got the 22 tooth, 44 tooth, and 150 tooth belt. This is for the uh, pulley uh, two to one reduction on the x-axis. And then lastly, just some flexible tubing to run all of your wires in. Um, 50 feet of whatever, just go to Home Depot and get some vinyl tubing or some silicone tubing or whatever. The stuff I used is actually this really great PVC uh, tubing made by Exelon, but the part number is no longer good and I can't find a comparable tubing on their website, so I can't help you out there. Um, this, the stuff I have is half inch outside diameter, three eighths inside diameter. It's very flexible. I really, really like it, but doesn't seem to be available anymore. Also, uh, if while you're getting tubing, get a bottle of that, that goop that you shoot into the tube when you're pulling wires through so it lubricates. Trust me, you're going to need it. Uh, so 400 bucks uh, for linear motion. Uh, so for fasteners, this is kind of a pain. I have a really, really good hardware store just down the street, and they have a huge selection of fasteners. So I could just go get one or two at a time, whatever I needed, but if you don't have that as an option, you may need to order online. So I went ahead and priced everything on McMaster. Uh, th these are the smallest amounts you can buy of each different size screw that I used. And, and this is a count of every screw that I've used to get the X and Y or the X and Z axis running, plus bolting all the components into the electronics enclosure. Um, you could use, I mean, you can use anything you want really, but these are what I used and here's the part numbers and the smallest amount you can buy from McMaster. Now I believe, and I haven't double checked, but I believe if you shop on Fastenal's website, you can actually buy one bolt at a time. So that would be a great way to save, uh, to not have to have a ton of extra, you know, bolts laying around. Everything I used were socket head cap screws, you know, the kind that take an Allen wrench, except for the bottom line, that half inch, 24 inch bolt. That's just a standard zinc hex head bolt. And it's for my AXA tool post uh, to go into the riser. If you're not going to, you may not need that bolt, uh, especially if you're not going to get rid of the uh, compound, you won't need it. Um, but I put it on there anyway. And then this section's grayed out because I'm not including this $103 in the final uh, total because it's probably not going to count. Uh, let's jump down to software. I'm using Fusion 360 for CAD CAM and I heard, and I can't remember who said this, but I believe that as long as you're a student or a hobbyist, you can use Fusion 360 for free. You only have to pay for it when you're in business. Um, now it's 300 bucks a year and I still think even for a hobbyist, that's a, that's a really great price. This is fantastic software. Um, lots of tutorials on YouTube. I highly recommend it. Uh, Linux CNC, I originally went with this when I converted my mill to CNC, and I planned on upgrading to Mach 3 at some point in the future, but I actually don't consider Mach 3 an upgrade anymore, um, and so I will never stop using Linux CNC. If you're on the fence about which one to go with, go with Linux CNC. If you have questions about it, feel free to shoot me a message and I can help you. Um, I may have mentioned it in the last video, but I'm actually going to be rolling out a, a series of videos that I've already filmed, actually on uh, Linux CNC, everything from installing it all the way up to getting your uh, machine configured and running. Uh, so plan on seeing that. I'll probably roll that series out right after the G0602 series is finished. Uh, also, this section uh, is grayed out because you may not have to actually spend any money. Oh, I forgot. Let me talk about G-Wizard. The G-Wizard calculator uh, is great for feeds and speeds, but it also has tons of other functionality. Unfortunately, I was only using it for the feeds and speeds. And if that's the case, then you might as well just use FS Wizard. Just do a Google search for it. It's just a website. And the feeds and speeds that it produces are really solid and very similar to the G-Wizard feeds and speeds. So I, when my G-Wizard uh, calculator subscription ended, I didn't renew it. Now, the G-Wizard editor, that's a different story. I love this program. It is also a subscription. And when mine uh, expires, I'll renew it. And uh, I use this, every piece of code that I get from Fusion 360, I run through GWizard Editor to do the final uh, tuning because there's some things I change. Uh, and the only reason for that is because I don't know how to edit the post in Fusion 360. I know it can be done, but I don't want to try and tackle that. So I do some manual editing inside the GWizard Editor, and it's great. Also, if you're just going to whip up a piece of code by hand, the GWizard Editor is great. And then it also has a lot of conversational wizards, and they're adding more all the time. So like um, 
You know, like if you just need to do a turning operation or a facing operation, there's wizards for that kind of stuff. And so it's getting better. I really like G-Wizard Editor, but not required, so this section is grayed out. Now for tooling, I'm not really going to list a lot down here because, frankly, you could do this conversion with hand tools. Um, power tools would be a lot better. But uh, a lathe, uh, I mean, a, a mill it was definitely going to be a big bonus. And a CNC mill, of course, is great. You are going to need to use the lathe itself. But because I don't know how you're going to go about building all the parts, I don't want to list tooling. Um, what I what I will list is taps and drill bits because you're going to need to bolt stuff together and you're going to need taps and drill bits. Now, this there's some money to be saved in this section. I've got it 121 bucks. That's because there's pretty much two of everything because you may break or dull some of these. Um, and then also on the drill bits, I went with cobalt, which are a little bit nicer than just your standard drill bit. And all these are priced through McMaster. Also a three-piece tap wrench set from Harbor Freight, which is a total piece of crap, but that's still what I'm using. Uh, here's the problem. For some reason, these the G0602 casting is terrible. I don't know if there's sand in the in the iron or I don't know what the problem is, but I broke so many dang drill bits. I didn't break any taps, but I kept breaking drill bits trying to drill into this stuff because you'd be drilling along just fine and then all of a sudden it would bind and snap a bit. Also, on, on I think three different holes that I successfully drilled, I would put a bolt in to test out the thing that's being bolted up, like a bearing block. And then when I would go to remove the bolt, something inside the hole would jam and then I would end up breaking the bolt trying to get it out. And then I'd have to redrill it. That happened. It happened twice for sure, maybe three times. So uh, it's a total nightmare. But that's why I'm saying you need to order some extra fasteners and some extra drill bits and probably a, an extra tap of each size as well because that's the nightmare. <laughs> anyway, uh, it looks like that's it. So the total 3184, um, I think that's pretty reasonable. Uh, you're probably going to be within a couple hundred bucks of that. Like I said, you may have to buy extra consumable sandpaper files. Um, I don't know, whatever. So, uh, but I think this gives you a good ballpark and hopefully helps you get started. Um, go ahead and check the description to download the Excel file as well as a PDF copy of the uh, file. And then while you're down there, um, ask your questions. Please post comments. I really appreciate it. Thumbs up. If you're visiting my channel, please subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of the G0602 CNC conversion series. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video.